Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here. Today we're going to show you how to program a Honeywell 5809 wireless heat detector to our 2 gig go control panel. As described in other uh, videos on the 2 gig system and the 2 gig sensors, a 2 gig go control will allow you to use Honeywell wireless sensors. As long as it's a Honeywell 5800 series device which operates on the 345 megahertz RF frequency range, it'll work with the 2 gig wireless receiver because that is also a 345 megahertz receiver. So you can use 2 gig sensors and you can use Honeywell sensors. We've shown you in a previous video why you would or how to program a Honeywell 5808 W3 wireless smoke and heat detector, but there are certain applications where you would want not want to know about smoke alarms, but you would want to know about heat detection. So that would be 135 degrees or a rate of rise where you're changing degree 15 degrees or more in a minute. So, perfect application. Kitchen. If you're cooking, you're generating smoke. If you had a smoke and a heat, you're going to have false alarms. You're going to have the central station calling you. If you don't get the phone call, fire trucks are coming out and all you were doing was cooking, so you don't want to have that. With a heat detector, if the smoke is in the room, no alarms are triggered. If the room gets really hot during a fire, or the rate or the temperature in the room rises 15 degrees or more in a minute then you get your alarm because that would be a true fire condition. So now that we know why we would use a 5809 we're going to show you how to program it to our 2 gig go control. Hit the home button, use our shortcut go control button to go and enter our installer code of 1561. System configuration and we're on Q1 which is select RF sensor number. The Go Control system works with up to 48 wireless zones. We have not yet programmed any zones, so we're going to accept zone number one, and we're going to go into the subset of questions for zone number one. First question is sensor type. What action will be generated at the panel when this device is triggered? It also tells the system what message to send to the central station based on what we're programming here. This is similar to a Honeywell response type. We have a list of sensor types on our website. We urge you to review each sensor type so you know exactly how to program your sensor or watch our video for the device you're using and you'll know what to use. If you hit the right arrow, we want to go over to 24 hour fire. This is a heat detector. If the system is armed or disarmed, we would want to know about rate of rise or fixed heat detection alarms. We hit the down arrow to lock it in and the equipment code is asking us to tell the system the specific sensor we're using. So we scroll past all the 2 gig stuff and we get to the HW options. HW for Honeywell and we can choose the exact detector we're using Honeywell heat detector 5809. Hit the down arrow and the serial number prompt is asking us to type in the device's serial number or you have the option to auto enroll. If you close up the device and you hit shift learn, if you tamper the device by popping the head from the base, you can see that it, it auto enrolled 0642820, which is the seven digit serial number for the Honeywell detector. The system even knew it was a Honeywell device, so we hit OK. We can verify again that that is the right serial number so we know that no other device just triggered and jumped ahead of us here. And then if we hit the down arrow, we're locking that in there. Equipment age is telling the system, is this an existing sensor that was already in the house or is it a brand new device? In this case, brand new device, we hit the down arrow to lock that in. Loop number is number one on this device, unlike the 5808W3, which allows us to do a few different actions with one sensor. This is only triggering on uh, high heat and rate of rise, and so it's only loop number one. That's what you would always want to use when programming a 5809. Here we're asked to give voice descriptors to describe what this zone is. Just like with all of our sensor programming, we want to use the chart on the back of our quick programming guide, which comes with our 2 gig go control panel. We also have this list on our website, alarmgrid.com and you want to use a three digit numerical value to equate to a word to describe this zone and you can use up to five words. You hit insert, it puts it to the first word in the list alphabetically 
and we want to call it kitchen heat detector because that's where we're installing it. So kitchen is, if we do alphabetical, 125. Now we have the word kitchen. If we hit insert again, it puts a board, the first word, and we call it heat. Heat is 111. Kitchen heat. And then finally, I like to throw the word detector in there. So 052, kitchen heat detector. Nice, clear description. Let somebody know that's viewing the screen when there's an alarm exactly what was triggered and where it is. Hit the down arrow to lock that in. And we're asked if we want to know or if we want to send alarms from this device to the central station. That's what reporting means, reporting to the central station. We are monitored with this system, so we do want it to be reported. Hit the down arrow. And now we're supervised or asked whether or not we want to be supervised. Supervision for this detector will alert us to low battery issues and range issues. So if this was borderline range, um, something environmentally changed, so all of a sudden it's out of range, instead of uh, finding out after there's a fire and it never triggered, with supervision enabled, you would know in advance that this dropped off the network. Same idea if you had a low battery alarm on this uh, or a low battery event on this because the battery's drained, um, instead of only knowing once the detector is dead, we will know in advance that there's a low battery issue so we can pop the cover, put a new battery in. So always recommended to have supervision enabled on your protection wireless devices. When we hit the down arrow, we're asked about chime. We do not want to chime off a of heat. There's really no way that would ever really chime and it wouldn't be a relevant option. So we're on a summary screen by hitting the down arrow and we can see that we have 24 hour fire we're a Honeywell heat sensor 5809. We have the proper serial number. It is a new device on loop number one and we're calling it kitchen heat detector with monitoring, reporting, and supervision enabled. Chime is disabled so we're good. And we're back to Q2 which is the next level of programming once you're done with your wireless sensors. If you had more sensors to do you could go back to Q number one. In this case we just wanted to show you the 5809 programming so we're going to hit end and exit. The panel is going to reboot takes a few seconds to come back alive and then the, the settings that we just programmed will be hard-coded in the panel and we can test our device to make sure it works. When doing a heat testing you can use a um, blow dryer to hit the, have the heat of uh, the rate of rise heat sensor go off or uh, for an easier test just to make sure the wireless transmission worked we can tamper the device pop the head from the from the base and you can see kitchen heat detector tamper so we know that twisting this activated the tamper as soon as you, you close the tamper it cleared the message and now we know that our Honeywell 5809 heat detector was properly programmed to our 2 gig go control panel we hope you've enjoyed this video and we invite you to subscribe to our channel if you have any questions on using your 5809 or programming it to your 2 gig go control panel please let us know by emailing support at alarmgrid.com.